Hi, I'm Jody, and let's continue. And we are talking about Debian package management. But first, in the first video, let's understand what are repositories and how they work. But in general, the way it is three, it's important, and you need to know how to install, upgrade, uninstall Debian binary packages find packages containing specific files or libraries, obtain package information like version content dependencies, and awareness of apt command. You should know about sources list, dpackage, dpackage reconfigure, and apt-get and apt-cache. Let's go and see. But in the beginning, at least in the first part of this video, or maybe I make it a separated part, we will try to show you what is repositories and how Linux systems work. As many other things, we claim that this was first appeared in Linux. Others used it later. What we are talking about? Things like App Store, which iPhone made very popular, but we had it at first in Linux world. Now it's very normal. If you want to install any software on most of the operating systems, be it iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, OS, uh, you will go to something like App Store, you search for your software, you tick somewhere or you click install or something and it will be automatically installed on your system. This used to be the case in Linux world for maybe 20 or more years, for sure more than 20 years. Uh, how does it work? Say you get a CD for Ubuntu or get a CD for Fedora, it looks like something. Ah. Or a CD for something else, Arch, Fedora, whatever Linux you get, Ubuntu. There are some softwares here, there is one installer here which installs it and that's it you install it on your disk and your computer works but you need some more softwares you issue and command and it automatically installs how any of these teams ubuntu fedora arch debian whatever major distro you use do have lists of all good useful whatever you call them packages in some repositories we call these repositories of software some of the distributions like fedora are more restricted about this they won't add any closed source software here blob here some distributions are very 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 open like Arch has a huge repository, some are smaller, some are bigger, Debian is huge, and there is lists of softwares here with the latest version compiled for your system, also the source code of it with the versions and everything. Also, it includes dependencies. If you are running VLC, it needs this, needs this, needs this. So when you go here and say, I need to install VLC, your system looks into the repository. We will talk about it how later, and it's different between Fedora, between Debian. But in any way, at the end, you will end up looking into the repository. The repository will give you the executable of this software. Also will give you whatever dependency it needs. Your system can install all the dependencies. This dependency may con this, sorry. Oh, okay. This dependency, again, it's a package file, may contain that it needs other dependencies to run. It will get all of them, install them one by one. The packages might include some configuration scripts. They will be configured when, after installation, and go up to the hierarchy. And at the end, VLC will be installed because it has all of its dependencies. All the binaries will be copied to wherever they have to be. All the configurations will be copied to slash etc most of the time. And then some installation 
scripts might run whatever package contains will run and you will have vlc working and running here this is the general concept of the repositories on debian word our files are dot deb and you use uh, tools like apt-get dpackage or more recently apt to control them and you have some other commands like apt cache your packages in Linux world uh, on the sorry Debian world looks like this although most of the Linuxes use the same thing at least for the first part the name of the package for example VLC its version 17.2 build 1 for example and its architecture your computer is uh, for example AMD 64 uh, 64-bit Intel or AMD CPU dot Deb. This is the format of our uh, Debian packages. For example, this is a sample. Tmax 321 build blah blah. This is your architecture. It can be R, ARM computer, it can be whatever you have, PowerPC. Deb. This is the concept of repository. This repository can be on the internet. When you installed your CD on your computer, it's configure some repositories normally on the internet we will see in a minute how this is configured but you can also have repositories on cds and say okay this cd contains some of my data so you may buy a package of the for example debian 11 repositories offline there will be lots of cds and dvds and when you install something it says okay put this cd inside the drive there can be copied on one hard disk network share whatever your system admin does because if you have for example a network with sent oss 200 sent oss running and all of them need to update themselves you don't want 200 computers to go to the internet and return back and consume all your bandwidth you will configure one internal repository and configure them to be updated from here just to give you an idea of what can be done in the debian world i have my ubuntu let's run our terminal on my ubuntu uh, as you can guess configurations are in etc i'm working with apt packages so it's in apt if you do an ls here the main file is sources list on a debian machine the sources list is your sources list if you do a less on it you will see how it works this is a good example it starts with deb so i'm introducing a new deb source this is the address go to this address this is my operating system so in this address say I am a jammy. This is a code name for this specific Ubuntu. And check for packages in these categories. Main, restricted. You can add more things like country, like universe, whatever your distribution lets you. This is for organizing packages in different parts. For example, if I'm installing a super secure system, I won't add restricted country or universe i would say okay only installed from main less software but main softwares restricted is the software which is restricted by law may have closed parts and this kind of stuff anyway for example for cd as you can see this is commented so this line won't be used but if i uncomment it whenever i want to install something it might be installed from the cd-rom called ubuntu blah 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 beta amd blah 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 from jammy main restricted same thing you can have different parts some debians have only one line which says deb source debian blah 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 the version of your debian and all the categories you have in ubuntu they decided to make it super long and for example say and for example put multiverse group somewhere else they could add is to the same line no problem but this is easier to manage and see what you have also sometimes we have this jammy security 
So your computer will go to this address and search for the packages. We'll ask them, I want Jammy security operating system. Why not Jammy and why Jammy security? Because say you have installed Tmax, Tmax version 4 on your computer, 4.2. Tmax may upgrade itself to Tmax version 5 and maybe your distribution decides to add this to the repository. So if you update your system and upgrade your system, you will have Tmax 5. But in some cases on our servers, we don't want upgrades. I have configured my system to work with this specific version of PHP. PHP 4.2 is working. I don't want to upgrade to 4.3. It may break things. But sometimes security flaw appears. So they fix it in PHP 4.3 and also they add it to PHP 4.24.1 and put this in the security group. So if I do a real upgrade from the Jammy, I will be running PHP 4.3, which is not good. I don't want a real upgrade. I just want security upgrade. So they put this here. So I will keep only this line and I will only upgrade for security, not for the next versions of softwares. This is why they have this. And how to update your system update keep your focus i will say sudo apt get update what does it do this is very important to understand on debian systems as you can see it is checking all the repositories defined on the sources list not technically all because it know that some of them have already been updated a few minutes ago so i don't need to update again but at the end it goes through the sources list and checks all the addresses and just updates the list of software introduced there not the software themselves i may have vlc version 16 installed on my computer when i say apt get update it goes through all the sources introduced in sources list and sees that okay there are some new softwares here and it updates a cache file with the data of this list. It won't download the next version. It won't upgrade anything. It will just update its cache from repository list. Where is this cache? As you should be able to guess, maybe if you don't, don't panic. It takes time. It's in var cache. Good guess. What, and what is your next directory? Apt. Here you have a cache file of your repositories. So if I say install this software, it won't go and check the repository. It will check inside this cache and says, okay, I know VLC has version 16, 17 on blah, blah address. We'll go and download it. Won't check all the sources. Apt get update will update your sources into this cache only. At the end, what happens if you want to add one more new source why you may want to add it say you go to jadi jadi company which is a huge security company just imaginary and you will say okay i'm paying you two million dollars per month to give me the j secure software i say okay thank you where is the money you show the money and there I will give you an address and say, okay, it is located in HTTP Jodi.net. It is called Jammy and it's in the group programs. So you will go to your VI ETC app sources list, go to the end. We will learn how to work with VI later and you will add deb HTTP jody.net slash uh, whatever I gave you it's Linux and then you say okay this is for jammy versions and look into the program now if I do an apt get update all the programs introduced here 
will be added to your cache and later you can do an apt-get install for example j secure which is part of this group although you should not give this address to your friends because they will use this for free so i should add some password or something which is not our syllabus but this is not a good practice because if you upgrade your operating system this file might be overwritten and you will lose your valuable source if your friends want to see what you have done they have to go and compare and see what line is new so as i talked about it in the previous uh, lessons there is one ah, you should go to the cd etc apt as we talked on the previous uh, sessions too this is the main configuration file but this is a custom that some softwares started to create one directory which is called sources list d this is a directory if you go inside this and create a new file it will be kind of added to the end of this so if i want to add new source i can go to cd sources list vi jody sources list and add mine here jammy and prog and save this i'm not root so i cannot save any file here but imagine that i did now i have a new file in sources list which is much cleaner i'm not uh doing changes in the sources list and everything so this is much much more cool and easier to handle if i do an sudo apt get update my new source will be added there it will go and check all the addresses i have in sources list and create the cache from the repository files won't upgrade anything actually we will see in the next section how to upgrade and install and remove and check and everything be with me